Super Baby 2 recently came out in Dragon Ball Fighter Season 3, so today I wanted to make a little bit of a tier list for you guys. Now, a couple of quick words before we actually get into it. Number one, I'm not a professional Dragon Ball Fighters player, so I'm gonna need your guys' help in the comments down below to let me know where you would place certain characters on this tier list. And lastly, I'm not gonna be going over every single character super in detail, just because that would make the video extremely long. So for the sake of time, let's hop right into this. So here's what my B tiers would look like. As you can see, we don't have any C tier or D tier, just because I think this game is pretty well balanced, and the entire cast is extremely viable, like there's not a single character on this roster that you can't do well with with enough practice. There could be an argument to be made where Beerus would go in the B tier, maybe A tier. I'm a little undecided as far as this one's concerned, but I think we're gonna drop him into B tier. Let me know what you guys think about that. So, look, I gotta be real with you, it hurts to put Nappa here because, I mean, I'm a Nappa main, right? I play Nappa, that's what I do, but <laughs> this guy is not a good character. Sure, if he gets you in the corner, he's like the best character in all of existence, and with all of his 50-50s, his setups, his resets, his restands, he can certainly seem like an oppressive character, but getting started is a massive issue, and if you don't get started, you're gonna get absolutely destroyed. I think Goku Black has amazing mix current day in Dragon Ball Fighters, and he's extremely mobile, but for as mobile as he is, sometimes he can easily be zoned out, seeing as he doesn't have your traditional key blast. Videl is Videl, I don't even need to tell you guys her issues. I guess I forgot about Fuse Masa, but so did the rest of you guys, so <laughs> we're gonna move on. Android 16 after season 1, everyone was petrified of this character and they nerfed him into the ground. Frieza just gets beat out by everybody else, man, like, let's just look at this for example, right? Most people in Dragon Ball Fighters play UI Goku, and UI Goku pretty much snuck out everything Frieza can do just for being UI Goku. Add on top of that, a lot of the roster has beams and so on and so forth, they can really bust through Frieza's neutral game pretty easily, provided that they're a decent player. Now Gogeta, Gogeta received a lot of buffs recently, this is an amazing character now, and honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing him be A tier or S tier, but with Gogeta man, you do a move, you press a button and that's it, you're locked into that. So if you whiff, it's a wrap, you can easily get punished. However, if you get hit, and it is easy in order to hit with Gogeta, especially with how much range some of his attacks have, like his 2M for example, you can really dish out some nasty damage. Now here's the A tier people I got in the game, and I'm gonna be real with you, this isn't exactly ordered. One character I really felt conflicted about was Majin Buu. The average player isn't gonna be able to milk everything out of these characters, and they're not gonna be able to experience these characters the same way a professional does. And if you play a good Majin Buu player, the average player is definitely getting opened up really easily. So in that case, I'd put him higher, but against more skilled players, I'd say Majin Buu is A tier for sure. Now, Gohan is someone I'm conflicted on, man, because this character used to be an absolutely terrifying opponent. But over the patches, over the years, he ended up getting power crept by a lot of the other characters in the game, which led to his kind of downfall, if you will. And I also felt similarly about Trunks, because Trunks seems like he's one of the most powerful anchor characters in the game, and with Sparking, Limit Breaker, he certainly can be, but unless you have Sparking on, on the anchor trunks, he's really not all that scary. And Super Broly, this is another character. I mean, I love this character. I know some people want him to be nerfed, but honestly, I think he's sitting at a really honest place in this game. A lot of people complain about his command grabs, and I don't think they're as much of an issue as people make him out to be. While sure, they could be a little bit difficult in order to defend against, as long as you know what to look for, you should be pretty okay. And someone we definitely forgot for A tier is Master Roshi. This man's assist got absolutely sniped in the latest patch. It's, it's practically useless at this point. Not literally, I mean, obviously it still serves a use, but we can't deny it's a lot weaker than it it used to be, and we're immediately seeing people starting to drop this character off their team because the B assist doesn't hold people down as well as it used to. This went from being by far the best assist in the game to being kind of just another assist. So for that, I gotta put Master Roshi in A tier. In fact, I'd probably put him at the lower end of A tier, maybe like around this area, just because he's so difficult to use and the average player, either A, isn't gonna invest the time in order to get good with him, or B, isn't going to be good enough in order to utilize all of his tools. In the hands of a professional, I think he can easily be S tier, but for the average player, I think A tier is, is pretty honest. Now for the S tiers. Captain can use another one of those weird ones for me, man, because once again, this is another really technical character like Master Roshi, where if you don't have the time to invest into this character, you're not gonna get good with him and you're not gonna utilize all of his tools. So he can just as easily be B tier in the wrong hands. But in semi-capable hands, in the average player who invests the time in him, he can certainly be an S tier character with super oppressive offensive pressure that's extremely hard to deal with. I feel like the same can be said for Cell, 
where Cell is able to dish out a lot of pressure pretty easily, in fact. And this is a character that can easily mix you up and hit you with some 50-50s that would definitely open up even the best of players. Andrew 18 has seen a lot of popularity recently, and for good reason. She has an awesome defensive assist. Now, I could never make the most of it personally, but seeing some people use that, it's absolutely incredible. Not to mention her other assists are also pretty decent, and she's also able to go ahead and apply ridiculous amounts of pressure. And I feel like this is a consistent theme from S tier up, is really offensive heavy characters tend to be better in this game because this game is very offense based. I mean, just look at Yamcha, right? He's got Gale Claws, Wolf Fang Fist, and an amazing assist. G2 Goku has fallen from grace a little bit since season two, but he's still a really solid character. And the same can be said for Bardock. His assists also got nerfed, but he's still a really stand-up character. Now, Piccolo here, this character has been an issue. They tried to go ahead and nerf this dude's Oki, but Piccolo doesn't care. His orbs allow any character in the roster to immediately have pressure once they knock an opponent down. Not to mention the fact that Piccolo himself pretty much doesn't even need an assist in order to go ahead and get pressure. This is a character that can barrage you with attacks and really overwhelm whoever he's fighting against, making it pretty easy to open people up. And once he does, he can dish out really respectable damage. And I honestly forgot about Fujito. I didn't even see him here, but we're gonna put him in A tier. Now for the top tier characters. And honestly, we could just plop these in. It doesn't really matter the order because they're all pretty incredible in their own right. But if I had to put them in order, I think it'd look a little something like this. UI Goku is just UI Goku. He plays Dragon Ball Fighters pretty much better than anyone else in the game. Kid Buu can mix you for days, and he can dish out ridiculous amount of damage. Z Bro, I mean Z Broly, Z Broly, do I need to go into that one? Base Vegeta, I mean, we've all fallen in love with Base Vegeta over the years, and it's pretty understandable why. He does good damage, builds good meter, and has good pressure, great neutral, and great tools in order to get in. Android 21, while being a technical character, you can know the bare minimum with her and still do really well. Not to mention the fact that a lot of her normals have good frames and good reach. She can also mix people up pretty easily, so that's always a plus. Base Goku is just an all-round really incredible character. Team Gohan and Gotenks, on the other hand, these guys can really go on the offensive very effectively. Once again, as I said before, people who have a lot of really great offensive tools in this game tend to do better than other characters. And these two are an example of that. Now for Super Baby. The character's only been out for a week, maybe like a week and a half at this point, and after playing him a ton, after hearing a lot of pros talk about him, I think it's safe to say that he falls in the A tier class. While he's certainly amazing and he can definitely lock opponents down for sure, not to mention the fact that he has absurd amounts of damage, his normals aren't exactly the best, and you can actually get around his key blasts pretty easily. I mean, at the end of the day, they are still just key blasts. And once you get Baby to block, the key blasts don't boomerang anymore. So a lot of what he's good at ends up going down the drain if the opponent ends up going offensive on you. And since Dragon Ball Fighters is pretty offense-centric, that happens pretty often. All you need is a simple vanish, a super dash, or a full screen beam, and suddenly, Baby's beams don't mean anything. With that said, it's the same exact beams that allow Baby to go ahead and punish really reckless decisions from the opponent, which is kind of what makes him incredible. He's really able to capitalize and take advantage of just situations other characters wouldn't be able to. Alright, I think that pretty much wraps up today's video, but let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. Who do you think should be repositioned where on this tier list, and why? Also, if you want more Dragon Ball Fighters content, we actually just fought Globku, and if you want to check that video out, you can have a peek at it right here on the left-hand side of your screen. On the right-hand side, I have a video here I think you'd really enjoy. If you enjoyed today's video, remember to hit the like button, it helps out a bunch, and if you're new here, become part of this beautiful community. We have a bunch of people here that love Dragon Ball Fighters just as much as you. And I'd love to see you back around tomorrow. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I'll catch you guys tomorrow, but until then, have yourselves a wonderful day.